These are some of the new X Elite and X Plus laptops, and they're supposed to be efficient, which means they last a long time, at least the longest lasting Windows laptop, or so the claim says. So I wanted to put that to the test myself. Now they were all sleeping just recently <laughs> because yes, I did actually end up killing them. I did it. They're all dead. But they just need a recharge. It's okay. Don't feel bad for them. The test recently just finished and I want to see the results. I haven't seen them yet, so I'm really excited to, to take a look at them. By the way, just a disclaimer, I bought these machines myself. Nobody sent them to me and nobody paid me for this video. This video is partially sponsored by the members of the channel. If you'd like to join, there's a button right down below. For the X Elite machines, I've got the Samsung Book 4 Edge, Surface Laptop 7, Dell XPS 13, Asus Vivo Book S15, and finally, the Surface Laptop 7 with an X Plus chip in it. I also tested the XPS 13 with an Intel Core 7 155H and a Surface Laptop 6 with a Core Ultra 7 165H. <sighs> Those names. And I threw in my M3 MacBook Air and my daily driver M2 Max MacBook Pro. I saw a bunch of reports on battery life on these new machines and I didn't think it was enough to represent how us developers use machines. There's battery rundown tests where people are just watching a video for 20 hours. Not realistic. There's rundown tests where people are running Cinebench for two hours or however long the battery lasts under such high stress. Also not realistic. There's articles like this from Laptop Mag. The results from our intensive battery life tests highlight one area where co-pilot PCs shine, they don't mention at all what this intensive test is. They don't, they don't even say. But based on these numbers, I'm gonna guess it's just playing a video. And that's why as a software engineer, I decided to write my own test, which is gonna be an automated, more realistic example of how we use our machines. It took me a few days and a few nights to write this code and then run it, but I think this provides a good baseline for how I'm going to be testing my machines going forward in the future as well. This program automatically opens up some apps like Todoist, Notion, copies files, automatically writes code and then runs that code. That's Python code, so there's an interpreter. There's also compilation steps that does a .NET build, the code browses documentation, and it even plays music while you're working. Now, before we get into those results, I wanted to get some measurements using a test that I've already done before on the channel, namely running a highly intensive program that really pegs the cores. Why? Well, because based on the watt hours of the batteries that are in these machines and the rundown times, while we're pegging the cores to the max, we'll be able to tell how efficient these machines are. This is the battery drain over time by model. They all started at about and <laughs> some of them fell off pretty quickly, like the MacBook Pro from 2019 with the Intel Core i9. Whew, that one could not take it for long. It lasted only half an hour. And that one I bought on Amazon used, so the battery might not be in the best of shapes. I think we just ignore that one. But all the rest of the models look like they have a pretty linear drain of battery. And I was really surprised to see that the MacBook Air from 2017 with the Core i5 got up to 190 minutes, longer even than the MacBook Air M1. Now this right here shows the work performed versus battery drain and you'll see why the MacBook Air 2017 with a Core i5 lasted a while because it's barely doing any work. As the battery was being drained, the work done was somewhere in the range of 20-25 iterations per minute. How many times it can execute that script in a minute. On the right side, we've got the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M3 Max doing over 400 iterations per minute. That is an insane amount of work that it did. And the fact that this chart is pretty linear going straight up and down means that the work done does not change based on how much battery is left in that particular model. There are some outliers here, like the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M2 Max. I ran that test twice, by the way. This is my control. I did that back in January and I just did it now. You can see that the two runs for that machine are pretty much aligned and I'm going to add the X Elites into here as well. To figure out efficiency, we need the total capacity of each battery. Now the total capacity might might not be exactly the same as what the manufacturers say. So on a Windows machine, to get that, you use power CFG, battery report, and then you can output that to a file. It's gonna be an HTML format. And Alex has to spell battery correctly. There we go. This is the Samsung. And you can see that the design capacity is 60 and a half thousand milliwatt hours and the full charge capacity this is a brand new machine. So we've got a little bit less than the design capacity, but that's pretty close. You can also see the power usage here, which you'd think, oh, I might be able to calculate all the charts that I need from here. But no, this is not accurate enough. This just reports the remaining capacity on certain events and not necessarily on a regular time increment. But as the machine ages, you can come here 
and check to see what the full capacity is and figure that into your calculation. And also this can tell us what the advertised capacity is versus the actual capacity of all these machines. Overall, because they're brand new machines, I'd say we're pretty close. Now from this, we can calculate efficiency. And you can see that the MacBook Air 13 inch M2 is the most efficient machine out of all these. In other words, it did the most amount of work, lasted the longest and only sipped on that battery. The Core i9 and the Core i5 are the two least efficient machines. Surprise, surprise. And we've got the MacBook Pro 14 inch M3 Pro being the second most efficient. Another 14 inch over here is the MacBook Pro M3. That's the base model. Also pretty efficient there. My daily driver is somewhere in the middle right here. The M2 Max MacBook Pro. That's the machine I'm on right now. Now let's take a look at all the new X Elite laptops plus a couple of other Intel based ones like the Core Ultras. This has all the previous MacBook results, but it also shows that the X Elite models are right there, right in the middle. So they last a pretty good time under this amount of load, not as much as the MacBook Airs M2 or M3, or even the MacBook Air M1. All the MacBook Airs are doing really well over here for battery drain. Much better than the X Elites, except for the Asus VivoBook S15, which actually has the biggest battery. It's got a 70 kilowatt hour battery in there. Now in the battery drain versus work done, things get a little bit interesting. That MacBook Air M3 line is dipping a little bit. So that means the work done initially was higher and then it dipped a little bit, but not too much. A much bigger dip was in the Galaxy Book 4 Edge with the X Elite. We went from almost 200 down to almost 150 in the top 20% of the battery. The Surface Laptop 7 with the X Elite also showed a very similar curve, although it didn't go down quite as much. And the Asus VivoBook with the X Elite jumped down quite a lot. Look at this. It started around 175 and as the battery reached about 80%, the work done per iteration went down to about 75. My control was the M2 Max MacBook Pro 16 inches. That stayed pretty constant in both runs from January and from yesterday. Now looking at the efficiency, MacBook Air with the M3 chip, this time being the most efficient, followed by the MacBook Air with the M2 chip. Then the MacBook Pro 14 M3. The X Elites are falling in the middle with the Asus VivoBook being the worst and the two Surface Laptop 7s being the best. X Plus Surface Laptop edging out the X Elite Surface Laptop just by a tiny bit. Those Surface Laptops did way better than the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M2 Max, MacBook Air M1, and of course, better than the Intel Core Ultras and the Intel Cores. You can see the two Dells at the top too with the X Elite getting much higher efficiency score than the otherwise identical Core Ultra 7 model. So now we're going to switch to the automated test, which is going to be a more realistic example of how you would use your machine. And I set this up exactly the same way on all the machines. I had 15 tabs open in Chrome. I know, I know some of us have 30 or 40 tabs. Don't brag. Don't brag about it. I know 15 I thought was enough. I had Notion running. That's a note taking app built with Electron. I had Todoist, which is another Electron app. Those are a little bit different, by the way, in that Todoist was built for ARM, but Notion hasn't been built for arm yet. So we're going to see a couple of apps that are x64 based running through prism translation on these new windows for arm machine. I also kicked off a track right at the beginning of this test to have music running so that uh, you know, we're vibing nicely while we're coding. Speaking of coding, I had an automated workflow to write automated code. And then after I finished writing the code, it ran the code. It was that same Mandelbrot test, the Python intense test, but I did it in short bursts to kind of simulate a realistic scenario of what you would go through. You write some code, you build some code, you write some code, you run some code. Yes, I didn't only do Python, which needs an interpreter to run. I also did a compilation, a .NET compilation as part of this as well. And of course, what day will be complete without watching a few YouTube videos. Now, a lot of tests out there that drain the battery focus on just playing a video for eight or 12 or 20 hours. I don't think that's very representative of how we use our machines. Just like I don't think it's really representative to have a boss to the wall test like I did earlier. Yeah, that's why I wrote this. Each iteration was a half an hour long and I kept track of how many iterations were completed. For example, on this Surface laptop with the X Plus chip, you started with 100% of battery, just like on all of them. And the last iteration that was logged had 8% at almost four in the morning and it did 12 iterations. I'm gonna clean this up, put the footage together and then I'll share the results.
All right, let's see. They're all working. Surface Laptop 6 is the first one to go. That's the Intel Core 7 165H. Dell XPS 13 with the Intel Core Ultra 7 is next. No surprise there. Everybody's still in the competition. MacBooks versus X Elites. And my M2 Max MacBook dies. Now, I've been using that machine for over a year now. It's not a brand new battery and it's got an 87% capacity. So I'm just making excuses for it, I know. Galaxy Book 4 dies next. And that's surprising because it's the second biggest battery from the new X Elite batch. Almost 62 watt hours on that one. Very close to the Asus VivoBook, which has a 78 watt hour capacity. Oh, the VivoBook dies. So the three largest laptops died next. Even though they had big batteries, they also have the biggest screens. Oh, the Surface Laptop 7 with the X-Elite dies next? That's surprising. M3 MacBook Air, Dell X-Elite, and Surface with the X Plus are holding on. And the Dell X-Elite dies next. MacBook Air and Surface 7 with the X Plus? We have a winner! The Surface Laptop 7 with the X Plus chip lasted the longest out of all these laptops. Let's check out the actual numbers here. The two Intel cores drop off pretty quickly and i don't need to tell you but the macbook air and the surface laptop 7 with the x plus last the longest now as for efficiency since this particular loop was one iteration per half an hour then the efficiency chart is pretty much exactly the same as the battery usage chart this just gives you a slightly different visualization than the other one. Now, all these tests were done under high performance. And if you wanna see how I set up my performance on these machines, check out this video right over here and this video for a development environment set up on these machines as well. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time.